What is happening, y'all? Cowboy here, and welcome to my walkthrough for Elden Ring. Now, if you've seen one of my other Souls-like walkthroughs, you know that I typically try to go for 100% covering all the NPC side quests, every items, all of those things. Uh, because of the open world nature of this, this is more going to be a platinum walkthrough. We're still going to aim to find every dungeon and get you every spell and all of those things. But just because it is a open world game, I'm sure there are going to be things that people are discovering for years to come. So if I do miss something, I hope you forgive me. But rest assured, you will get through this game following this guide and you will get your platinum trophy and you will have more stuff than you know what to do with. So with all that being said, let's jump in. At this point, I'm over uh, about 150 hours played. This is my fifth playthrough, so I'm pretty comfortable with all of the content. Um, not not all four of those playthroughs are done. Uh, one of them is done. Three of them are ongoing, but so there's, there's a lot of moving pieces to make sure we have everything covered for y'all with this. But anyway, to get started, the first thing we're going to talk about is selecting your class. And in general, for the walkthrough, we are going to suggest a Vagabond. Now briefly, just to go through them, uh, Vagabond is going to be quality. Quality scaling weapons, it means weapons that scale off both your strength and dexterity. And the reason I'm going to recommend that for the walkthrough is because it's going to give you the stats to use the majority of weapons you encounter in the game. And especially on a first playthrough, I think that's really valuable because you'll be able to test out a bunch of different things. You'll be able to find out what you like the most, and that's important. Uh, the Warrior, this is kind of your default dexterity class to start. Hero is your default strength class to start. Bandit is if you want to do kind of criticals and bow style of play. This is really fun, but definitely more of an advanced class. Astrologer would be your default mage class to start. Prophet, your default uh, faith class to start. Samurai is another dexterity based class, but this one you're going to have some bleed because it does the Uchi. The Prisoner is more of a PvP oriented mage. Uh, we have higher dex and intelligence. We have an S stock and we have some PvP oriented spills. And then Confessor is more of like a Faith Paladin type start. So it's it's a little bit more aggressive uh, than than the, the Prophet, but it still has some Faith type stuff. Wretch is your, your most basic. It starts at level 1, 10 stats across the board, and it has a club. Now in general, your starting class in Elden Ring is ultimately just going to come down to what do you want your starting stats to be, and what do you want your starting items and weapons to be. Once you get to endgame, almost nothing here is going to be relevant because your stats are going to be all over the place. So, you know, pick whatever class you're comfortable with. If you want to start with the axe, but you think you might end up being a mage eventually, then go hero. If you know 100%, I want to be a mage, I want to cast spells, then go astrologer. There is literally no wrong way to play this game, and regardless of what class you pick, you'll be able to get through it. So, my recommendation is the Vagabond, just because this is going to give us... Uh, a 14 strength and 13 dex, which means there's going to be a variety of weapons that we're going to be able to use. Uh, we're not going to worry about, about changing anything uh, on visuals because we can change that later. Now, as for our keepsake, 100% I would recommend Stone Sword Keys. Uh, the Crimson Amber Medallion isn't worth it. You level up your vigor like once and you're getting that bonus. Lands Between Rune isn't worth it. We're going to be showing y'all where to get runes. Golden Seed, also not worth it. I've heard a lot of people saying that they, you know, Golden Seed, Golden Seed is the best. By the end of the game, you're going to have like 10 extra Golden Seeds if you've done all the content. So having one more at the start is really irrelevant, especially because I'm going to be taking you around and snatching up like seven or eight of these right at the start of the game. So I would not suggest that. We can buy these from a merchant. We can find these and buy these. Um, you know, nothing here is really needed except for stone sword keys. And the reason for that is that these are consumables that are going to open uh, various like fog rooms throughout the world that usually have unique treasures. And you can find them all throughout the world. You can buy them from merchants. But if there's one thing you can never have enough of, it's keys that open doors hiding loot. So stone sword keys for sure. Uh, you know, do whatever you want for your look. Like I said, we can change that up a little bit later. So I'm not all that worried about it. And we're going to jump in. I was curious, I am playing on PS5, so I'm hoping this will be a lot smoother than my previous experience. Because this is a guide to get you through the game as well, I'm going to be skipping cutscenes and stuff. Uh, the big thing here is, you know, you can watch all the cutscenes on your own. I'm not, I'm not worried about that stuff. I want to get as much information as possible packed into these videos. So pick up the finger right there. 
Uh, that is what you use to write messages, leave messages in the game. You can leave messages on the ground, like, you know, stuff like this right here. You know, praise the tarnished. Uh, there's a door over here. There's a unique summon behind this, but it's locked for now. We actually come back to this area later. This is known as the Chapel of Anticipation. But for now, just head this way. Now, there is going to be a starter boss here. You can try and whack him a bit if you want. This guy doesn't even need to kill you. He just needs to do some damage to you. Uh, and then after he's hit you a couple times, you end up going down and it just transports you. So honestly, I would recommend just save time, run in, let him beat you up, whatever. Oh god, this class fat rolls to start. We're gonna fix that in a second for sure. If you do manage to beat him there, you, uh, you get his sword and shield, but like I said, we can come back here later. So, you know, don't worry about it. We're gonna get those weapons in this playthrough, but... Ultimately, they're kind of irrelevant early on, so... It's not really anything to worry about. When you wake up, you will now have your Flask of Crimson and Cerulean Tears. These are used to heal your health and your FP. Those are the red and blue bars, respectively. Uh, the first thing I'm going to point out is this is the tutorial cave, so I don't need to do the tutorial cave, but I will still run through it real fast just for y'all. You do get a mode at the end of it, plus this will give us a chance to knock out all the, well, let me, let me knock out a bunch of the tutorial things real fast, so equipment, get rid of that, inventory, get rid of that, status, this is where you can see your stats. One important thing while you're here, if you hit help and you go to explanation, you have a detailed breakdown of what things do, so vigor is you know hp fire resist and immunity and we can tab over here and see that immunity involves uh the you know your resistance to various poisons and rot so if you're ever confused about what a particular stat means just go on over there go to the message tutorial and the multiplayer tutorial so this cave is really just to teach you basics you can see reset camera lock on remove target uh, the basics of this game are r1 is going to be your quick attack r2 is going to be your heavy attack I'm going to be providing uh, details via PlayStation buttons, but, you know, it's easy to adapt those. Uh, your R1 is going to block when you hold it. If you tap it like I do, you get the iconic Souls Jiggle. You can do this with lots of things. Uh, as for your heavy attack, you can also charge that as well. So, you know, regular heavy or charged heavy. Uh, charged heavies in general are really good. They're going to do a bunch of stagger buildup on enemies. And one of the things that's really nice about Elden Ring that they, they kind of pulled from Sekiro is if you've played Sekiro, you know that you can do enough damage to enemies to where uh, you're able to... Let me get rid of this guy. Stop it. You can do enough damage to enemies where you basically get a death blow. And we have something similar to that here. We're able to posture break enemies now. Uh, so right there you saw me two-handing a weapon. Two-handing is great to get through shields, but there are a couple other things you can do to to get through it. One of them is going to be a counterattack. To do that, you want to block. And after a weapon bounces off, then you're going to hit your heavy attack, R2, to do that counterattack. Now that's really strong, but keep in mind that you're really going to want an attack to bounce before you go for it. But getting it will do that stagger break like you saw right there. Now you're not going to stagger break every enemy you encounter, but you will quite a few of them. So, that one ended up dying. Uh, but yeah, Stagger Break is really fun, but to be honest, I would not worry about doing it unless you have a great shield. Because the big thing is, you can, you can do that as soon as something hits your shield. Even if it's like an arrow that hits your shield, you can go into that attack. But if the enemy hasn't bounced off, they could be doing a 1-2. So, you'll try and go into that counterattack animation and you'll just get smacked in the face in the middle of it which is why I, I think it's better to play that uh, and do that play style when you are doing a uh, great shield style of play but some other things when you jump you have a jumping heavy you have a jumping light attack the jumping light attack in general is usually a sweep type of attack whereas the jumping heavy is going to be a straight down uh, in terms of, of doing that stagger break that i talked about we have a couple things that are really good to get that your jumping heavy attack, your charged heavy attack, and your counter guard. Those are going to be the main things that you should use to get those attacks off. 
So you can see doing it too early, you'll get booped. We need him to bounce. So you can see right there, he didn't have the bounce, and I was still able to get that counter attack. But what you'll notice is he went into an animation there to try and hit me. You know, the whole, the fact that I got that counter attack, uh, it worked out there, but very frequently it won't. So in general, I would suggest you have an enemy bounce off if you're going to use the counter attacks. Uh, there is not one right here, but these trees in general, every time you see these out in the world, they're going to have a seed. So just keep your eye out for those as you play and run around, and that's how you get most of your seeds. So this is a great site. These serve as the bonfires for the game. Uh, and this is what the Stone Sword Key is for. You can see the, we have these little imp statues. I would not suggest opening this right now. This is known as the Fringe Folk Hero's Grave. Uh, there is some good stuff in there, but at this point in the game, we don't want to try and tackle that. We could get through it, but uh, if I remember correctly, I believe there's a Seed Beast at the end. Uh, the Dragon Communion Seal is in there, which is great for Arcane-style casting builds, but that's all stuff much later down the line, so don't worry about it for now. So we've got the multiplayer item. And here we are, out in Limgrave. So first thing we're going to do is head on over here, hit the grace, and we're going to talk to Varl. Uh, now this guy is related to a, a pretty interesting quest line. In general, anytime you meet NPCs, I would suggest talking to them until they've exhausted their dialogue. Because you usually can't advance quests unless you've ad advanced dialogue completely. Are you familiar? You may all that. Hmm. It will leave even if it. Like I said, this is a walkthrough. Grace I'm not going through all the dialogue. Uh, you know, I want y'all to enjoy the lore and whatnot in your own playthrough. But we got a lot to cover. So go on over here. This is going to be the summoning pool. This is super useful. It basically sends your signs to a bunch of areas nearby. So just a higher chance of finding people to fight uh, or finding people to co-op with. Now we have. The tree sentinel right there. Ignore him for now. You can try and fight him. I wouldn't recommend it. We're going to run straight on over to the church, which is just up ahead. Some starter blacksmithing stuff here. Talk to this merchant. There's a couple things we're going to want from him. We can't afford all of it right now, but go ahead and just pick up the crafting kit. Uh, we're going to come back to him later. Cracked pots are good. Telescope is good. And the cookbooks are also good. Um, yeah, we could get a torch while we're here, too. Never go wrong with the torch. Put that tutorial out of the way. Now, since this is going to be a quality build, one of the first things we're going to do is... Oh, we don't have any, but uh, we're going to have mainly all healing. It might be worthwhile to have one blue, just for, for uh, doing summons and whatnot, but I wouldn't go past that. If you're doing a casting build, you're going to want more of the blue flasks, but that's a different story. So, quick breakdown on our stats and our priorities here for this character. Vigor's our health. We want tons of it. Mind increases our, our mana, our FP casting bar. We're not going to need a lot of that here. Endurance is our stamina and equipment weight. We need lots of that. Strength and dex are our two main stats. Intelligence, faith, and arcane, we're going to largely ignore. Intelligence is for sorceries, faith for incantations. Arcane is for unique effects like bleed, uh, as well as item discovery. But the first thing we want to do is lower our equipment weight. So looking over on the right side of the scene, the screen where it says equipment load, you notice that when we have this on, we have heavy load. And when we do heavy load, we have this really fat, slow roll. And yeah, you could play like that, but honestly, the thing is when you roll in games like this, you have something known as iframes or invulnerability frames. And so having a faster roll is going to give you more iframes, you recover faster, and there's less of a chance that you get hit. I would suggest always being at at least a medium roll. Now, if you drop off everything, you can see we're now at a light load, and now our character is very zippy. So don't necessarily feel like oh you know i need armor armor you know armor is good like yeah armor can be good but to be honest armor is mainly going to be for fashion in this game uh, another thing is we can always see what damage we're going to do with a weapon if we meet the stat requirements so looking here 
Longsword is right hand armament one. This is right hand armament two. If I hit triangle, you can see the attack power over there, 125 and 145. Now, if I two hand the weapon by holding triangle and tapping R1, I can go again and I can see now it's 135 and 152. And the reason for that is when you're two handing a weapon, you are getting 1.5 times your strength. And this is important because let's say you find a weapon that requires 30 strength for you to use. If you two hand it, you can get away with only having 20 strength. So when you find these weapons that have really high requirements on strength, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, this does not apply, unfortunately. Oh, it's the stabbing halberd. I don't like that animation. Uh, this does not apply to dexterity or anything else. Strength is the only thing that gets that bonus. But so from here, the first thing we're going to do is run on up north to another grace. You can kill these dudes if you want, but I would suggest just ignoring them for now. More than anything, we want to get access to our horse and access to our maiden. Well, now right there, that, that uh, kind of obelisk in the center of this area, that is where we're going to get the map. And we are going to want to get that, but we'll grab our horse first and then we'll run on over there. So go ahead and race at this grace site. And our maiden's going to show on up. You're going to talk to her, run through her dialogue, yes, and accept. Sir, you, I can play turning to aid you. You need to the foot. This is how you level up. If you say refuse, you're not going to level up. So don't do that. Use it. It will some torrent to treat him with. Uh, now you'll notice it's nighttime. I would suggest turning off nighttime for now. Uh, in nighttime, there's additional enemies that'll come out in the world. Uh, usually, you know, uh, vampire bats, your giant kind of undead things like skeletons and ghouls and whatnot. Uh, but the, the bigger thing is there's certain bosses. What is going on here? Why does it feel like the game pros? Awesome. Gotta, gotta love it when things freeze mid walkthrough. Uh, but like I was saying, nighttime, uh, aside from those changes, there are also unique bosses that will only appear at night. And we're going to be covering those, but right now we have just started. We don't have any levels. Uh, I would suggest not fighting those things yet. So we're going to transition things back to either morning or daytime. I guess whatever color palette you prefer on the world. Uh, and then we're going to do a quick loop running around grabbing a couple different things now that we have our horse. So we're going to go ahead and pass time. Let's make it morning. And now that we have uh, the waifu and the ability to level, well, first thing I like to do is this. We're going to go to equipment here. Uh, right over here. Let me remove that. I don't like having that on. Uh, on the down slot, I like to put my horse. No, that's weird. I didn't say that I had talked to her. Well, that's okay. We can fix that real fast. Go talk to Melina. Have you re then summon me ah uh, I bequeath it will summon a torrent to treat him with there we go so back to where I was these are the pouch items and this basically gives you a secondary set of items so your normal items you hit down to cycle through them and then you're gonna hit square to use them with this though when we hold triangle it pulls up an alternate set that we can hit using left down up and right uh, in general, you can tap it, so like if I just triangle and down, like you didn't even see the menu pop up, but you'll see that I, I now have my stuff. So real fast, we're just going to grab this thing. We're going to grab two graces, actually, and we're going to warp. So snag this. Since they didn't aggro me, I'm going to go ahead and warp it down here. Actually, it would have made sense to just... Okay, night again. So go ahead over here. I am the wit. I talk heard to Ronnie. Look at talk. The word is to call forth. Ah, I was interested by torrents. She's going to show up after you have access to uh, Torrent, and she's going to give you the spirit calling bell, which will let you summon spirits. 
You can't summon them everywhere, but there are a lot of places that you can summon spirits, and it's going to really help with boss fights. So talk to her until she disappears. Uh, go on and put your spirits on. I like putting my spirits on my left and right. So put that on, Lone Wolf Ashes. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Got map. Okay, so now we're going to warp back over here, and you can see the map has been unveiled from us grabbing that thing in the center of the gatefront ruins. And now there is a bunch of things that we're going to want to do. We're going to do a quick loop here. Once again, we're just going to pass time so it's not nighttime. And don't worry about this. We're going to clear all this stuff. But the first thing I like to do is we want to unveil a bunch of different things on the map. So we're just going to ride on through. Ignore that little shiny for now. This guy's going to jump down and try to smash you. What we're doing right now is getting you basically some starter type stuff. So we're going to get you set up with a easy farm. We're going to get a lantern. We're going to get a couple races, maps unlocked, extra seeds for more healing. All of those goodies. So we have a golden seed right here. After that, we're going to turn to the right. And right here in this field, we're going to grab this. That's another smithing shard to upgrade with. After that, we head north again. little shack right there. We're going to talk to that NPC, but first grab the stone sword key. Go on and talk to her and burn through her dialogue. Get my moat. heading to Stormvale Castle. Enticed by well that name. I don't have your it's scary, you know. I want to want nothing. Just keep talking to her. Can you take She's gonna give you spirit jellyfish, who's quite nice. It'll be glad. It was a pleasure to oh, tell them I love and finally get it was a pleasure. Oh. Okay, so her dialogue's done. Uh, do not miss this. You actually need that jellyfish summon for a puzzle later in the game. So go on and grab the grace. Uh, and after she moves to the main hub, she's actually going to drop a seed. So we're going to be picking that up later, but just keep in mind there's going to be a seed here. So after that, uh, we're going to go east for the War Master. I'm going to mark, mark some stuff. We want to go pretty much right here. And as we're running, if you see anything in the field, pick it up. These little skulls, when you run over them with your horse, they'll crack. another grace if enemies are pursuing you you can always activate a grace and then you can rest at it as long as you're not actively in combat like with them hitting you not see names but let me ask talk to him despite tell him my faith holds firm uh, and this guy has a bunch of different ash of wars you can pick up so if any of these sound good pick them up now i will say that this guy has a legendary weapon it is one of the armaments you need for your platinum now you can kill this guy right now and get it but there's a rather long quest chain that he's involved in and towards the end of it he's going to invade you and you can kill him then and get it uh so you know if you really want to just get the weapon now get it out of the way go for it i will say that you will lock yourself out of getting the bloody wolf armor so that armor from the the bloody wolf class or the bloody knight or whatever it was in the network test the one you've seen in all the promotional art if you kill this guy now, you cannot get that armor. So just, you know, food for thought. I would suggest waiting. Okay, so do that. Then we're gonna go this way. And then we're gonna go this way. So what we're gonna wanna do here, we're getting some quick upgrade mats. We're just gonna head south. You can see there's some giants here. We just want to run past one, get them to look at us, and then go hang out by the statue.
And then we're gonna run on over to that other marker. Drive by loot thief. You get hit, just keep running. Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Uh, there's an item in this camp right here, but these guys can overwhelm you, so just be a little careful if you're going to snag the exalted flesh. And then we want to run up this little cliff sign. So talk to this I guy. I, I just give and I'll pull. Don't dally. Give it your all. Give him a couple whacks. Ah. Well played, good sir. Well played. Oh, that mighty wallop of yours. Almost. <laughs> well, I. Once again, pleasure is mine. I journey to the east. And beyond these land, and upon their southern I'd heard with us not <laughs> I'm heading to Redmain Cart, I've heard. Alright, so we have run through his dialogue. Uh, there is fall damage in the game, but it's deceptive, so the best piece of advice I can give is you're gonna have to get a feel for how far you can go with your horse. But at that point we're gonna rest right here. And this is where we are going to wrap up. Uh, so, to give you an idea of where we're going to move forward from here, in the next episode, we're going to swing through this region, and we're going to swing through the region right below here, just to grab some more items. After we get all of those things, then we're going to actually start hitting Limgrave properly and knocking out all the stuff here. Uh, but this, this, what we're going to do in the next episode is really get what I would consider to be an ideal start to the game. So, I know you want more. Don't worry. It's coming. Stay tuned, and I'll catch you in a little bit.